Hi guys, welcome back to the channel. Today I'm going to be interviewing Valeria, who is a fourth year medical student in Tor Vergata's English Medicine and Surgery program. Valeria, thank you again for being here. I super appreciate it. Um, so the first question I want to ask you is, what are the timetables in Tor Vergata like? Like starting in first year and currently now in fourth year, what does your day-to-day -day look like? So classes generally uh, depends on the year. We first year we started in November to allow all the ranking list to go, uh, and usually it goes till end of January. Uh, for fourth year right now, due to COVID and stuff, uh, we had classes from October till end of December. We kind of like collapsed everything uh, through month, which was kind of busy, but it was good. Like we managed, uh, we had full days, like eight hours a day. First year for me was like six hours a day. Uh, so from eight, 8.30 upon like the teacher, because the schedule starts at eight and we finish at two. Uh, but sometimes you start later or you finish earlier just because like you very, uh, you communicate very well with the teacher. So like you can organize more or less the time schedule but it's pretty strict upon like the month and stuff like that uh generally so yeah we started eight we finish it too uh then if we have afternoon classes we usually don't have afternoon classes uh but if we do then we have a men's which is like basically a cafeteria both in the hospital and in a university so that's very good uh so yeah that's basically it, like the university days are those. Cool. cool. And um, so you you end around June, I think you said, sorry, but um, what? how do your exams work? Like when are your exams in the year? Do you have multiple attempts? Are they mainly oral? How does the exam system work in Tor Vergata? So basically, no, actually I said something wrong because like we are divided into semesters. So the first semester goes like, that's what I was talking about. The first semester goes from like, October, September to December, January, depending on oh, sorry, what yes. is going on. And then we have February exams, uh, which is one month of the exams. Usually you have two appelli in the same month. So you have one at the beginning and one at the end. Uh, and then you start again in May, March, and then you end around May, June. Uh, again, depending on the year, depending on the organization, but more or less, those are the ranges. And then you have June and July exams. And those are the official section. And then usually they add an Easter session, for example, so which is around April, and a Christmas session, for example, which is about December. And then you have the summer class, like the summer uh, session, which is in September. So you go the two official are February and June and July. And then you have like extras that are September, December, and uh, April. The December one is more like a question mark, while uh, April and uh, September are always there. Uh, yeah. So. Uh, and they're mainly of, oral or written? Or? They are oral, all of, all of them, they're oral. Especially us that in the English courses, we are very few people. So it's very easy to organize exams with the professors uh, without going through the text secretary and stuff like that. Uh, but they are all oral because they do have the time to like be and do oral exam for everybody. While for the Italian course, for example, you have like written exams to kind of like filter the people and then you all go to the oral. But for us, it's generally just oral exam. Um, okay. Yeah, and usually it's a complete exam. They tend not to split the exam in two, which is the hardest part for some exams that are very big. But yeah. It's doable. We have time in general, so yeah. Nice. And uh, when when does your like clinical experience start, and how does the clinical experience build into your current timetable? So we start first year. Uh, it's uh, first year. Every year we add. Let's say that every year we add a couple of days to the clinical practice. Now I'm fourth year, and I was supposed to do um, four weeks, five weeks of clinical practice. With COVID, it's a problem because of vaccination and stuff like that. But generally, like not COVID situation. Uh, first year, you have like an approach to the hospital, so you go to the different wards. You say like how the hospital works. Uh, um, what are the departments and kind of like you put your feet in the departments. Um, we did also blood 
uh, like we try to take blood to, with patients uh, in the first year. Uh, and then second year we did like, again, first and second year are kind of like get used to the fact that you're going to the hospital every day. Third year we had uh, surgery and uh, we had uh, some uh, internal medicine clinical practice that was more intense. You were more involved in the hospital life, especially if you want. The good thing is like if you want to be involved in the hospital, you can go around, look for professors and say, hey, I want to come to the hospital. I'm like, I want to learn. And they're very willing to help. Um, sometimes it's happened that like you are in the hospital doing nothing. But I feel like if you put yourself and like you show up uh, and you really want to do it, it's doable. Uh, and it goes like in two semesters again. So you have it in the um, end of the first semester classes. So January, February and then end of um, second semester classes. So March, June. So they kind of overlap with the, your studying for the exam, which kind of is, it's kind of heavy. Like, for example, now I'm preparing some exams and then I have to go to the hospital, which is mandatory. So, yeah, because both classes and uh, clinical practice are mandatory. So we have to go. And yeah. Well, I'm, I'm amazed that you guys uh, do clinical experience so early on. Because like I'm in fifth year in Sapienza now and I don't know how to take blood. And I interviewed someone from Milan who was in sixth year and they never learned how to take blood either. So it's amazing that Tor Vergata has like such a focus on clinical experience so early on. Yes, um, the, the thing is it also depends on the professors like and depends on you. I think like we being a lot of students, uh, the students that really want to do it and want to learn, they have to like show up and like say hey i'm one of these people that want to learn because then if you're there passively of course there are a lot of people there are a lot of patients they're not going to be like hey begging you to to do stuff you are the one that has to like try but they are pretty available yeah um and so what are the average tuition fees in tor Vergata? do you know like i know you can reduce the income um the, sorry, the tuition with the ISE, which shows your income. But yes. what are like the average tuition like? Um, I think it's very a wide range. I think like there are a lot of people that do not pay or manage not to pay or it's like 200 euros. They don't live with their family. They don't have an income. So it can be also more or less zero. Uh, but I think the max uh, is around... Uh, 4,500, something like that, for the whole. And you can split it in two or three um, slots. So it's like two slots of 200 and something and 2,000 something and one slot of something else. So it's more or less this. Like the maximum, I think, is 5,000. Max, like very, very high maximum thing. And so does the university have uh, scholarships? or grants or no for the tuition itself no uh people that are italian and uh, passed uh, uh the esame di stato uh will have if with 100 which is the max will have the free uh first year but i don't think this applies to international students um they are however like rome in general i think there are scholarships uh, uh, such as, I don't know, Lazio Disco, something like that. Yeah, uh, but there are some scholarships uh, on, like, they can help you pay just because they are, for example, we have this part-time in uh, Tor Vergata, which is basically uh, 1,200 euros, and you have, like, five, 150 hours, and it's based on your grades and on your credit. And they, you basically work for the uh, university. Oh, cool. So, <laughs> no, yes, no, for us, there is a tutoring. They say, okay, I'm the tutor of this subject, and they, I think they get paid like 500 or something like that. It changes with the year, but approximately, yeah. Very cool. So you actually have opportunities to work for the university and can students yeah. um, <clears throat> apply to this even if they don't speak Italian? Uh, yes, uh, I think Italian is not one of the requ like, like, like 
true requirements. Of course, if you speak Italian, you can work in some places. If you don't speak Italian, it's harder. The, the range of opportunities is smaller. Uh, but for example, since it's given to each, each faculty, so there is this called macro area, which is a, basically you work for your secretary. You do like attendance sheets, you try to fill in the attendance and stuff like that. So for that, international student can do it. I work in the library, for example. And for that, I think like if, if someone is not Italian speaker, it's kind of hard to communicate, uh, but it's doable. I don't think it's a problem. Nice. That's really cool. Um, so we also yesterday took a tour of Campus X and I was so amazed. It's such a beautiful campus. But do you know uh, like if most of your classmates stay on Campus X or do they live closer to the city? Like what, what in general, what are the accommodation options like and what, what are kind of like the costs um, associated? I think, okay, uh, in my class, uh, at the beginning, everybody lived more, most of, most of people just left and went to the city, just because campus, it's expensive, like range-wise, it's expensive. They offer scholarships, but first of all, it's just for Italian. And um, so the range of costs in campus is around 500. But you have like the gym, you have uh, you are very close to the university. So, for example, I walk there. I don't have to pay public transportation. Uh, before COVID, there was a shuttle that brought you to the main metro station, which was good. It's very well connected with buses, even though Tovergata is kind of like outside of Rome. So it's not as connected as it should be, but it's, it's doable. After a if you want to be more like uh, involved in the city life, uh, the areas that are the target are the Tuscolana area, so like Coglialbani and San Giovanni. And there, I think the range of cost goes from uh, 350 to 500 if you share. Uh, of course, if you want like a, a single apartment, it goes to a thousand or something. But of course, the closer you go to the center, the better it is and the more expensive it is. But uh, generally, they tend to be on the Metro A lane that goes from Ananina and this goes to the center. So once you are close to the Metro, it's very easy. Like it makes no difference. Nice. Um, so you said that the English course, that there's not many of you. What is your class size? Like on average, how many people show up and how would you describe like the dynamics with your class? Like, do you think you guys are generally collaborative. Do the upper years help the lower years? Do you share a lot of documents? Like, how would you describe the class dynamics in Tor Vergata and collaboration in general? I, I, me personally, I think it's very good. Like, I, I, if you talk with some one of my colleagues, they might be more skeptical about it. But I, overall, I think it's very good. Uh, we start around uh, thirty people, and uh, the problem is that. Uh, you can like after a while the class because you fail a year like uh, in uh, our course if you don't pass the first year if you don't pass two exams you stay in the first year you cannot go forward so sometimes you get like people get lost so approximately you start with 30 people and you end up with 10 people more or less um and in class classes are mandatory so more most of the people should come to class sometimes they don't uh, but for that like we help each other we try to make groups or like try to not leave the class empty um to allow like people that need to study or stuff like that to not come and not have the professor be like okay i'm just here standing without no one in front of me uh we have drives uh, and we share a lot of uh, content some of my colleague uh, uh, which is a very Italian thing. They do this bobine, which is basically you like transcript the whole class. Uh, me personally, I don't do it. And for that, they usually sell it, of course, because it's a, a hard job. But for other stuff like slides, classes, I think we are very collaborative. Uh, also, exam wise, I was telling you, it's very easy to organize dates on our schedule so like talk with the professor and try to organize as better as best as it, as it could be 
Uh, and I think that would be very hard with a 200 people class. Like, it's very complicated. So in general, yes, we are not best friends. Of course, that depends on the people, but we're collaborative. And the upper years, uh, they are very nice. Like, I think they always help. Like, we try to help the younger people also because we are a small group. So we try to, like, help each other just to, I don't know. Yeah, I mean, it makes sense to work yeah. with your colleagues. That's, that's Actually, I didn't realize you guys were um, such a small course. Like, only yeah. 30 people is really small. Like, each one year, so approximately, we like 30 times 6, so not that much. Yeah. Yeah, that's that's tiny. And how does that uh, impact your relationship with the professors? Because like, for example, we only on average 20 people show up. So the professors really get to know us by the time we get to exams and they really want us to come into their departments. And, you know, it gives us a chance to form a like more personal relationship with the professors. Would you say that like your professors also um, like care about your course, like not care about your course, but like, you, you, you know what I mean, right? Like, did they yeah. take special interest in you guys? No, stuff? for sure. Also, like when I talk with my friend that are in the Italian course, the difference is so big. Like we talk with the professor, we have a relationship. Of course, also here, it's up to you. Like if you want to have a relationship, if you want to get to be known by the professor, not in a bad way, but just uh, to show up and say, okay, I'm interested in your subject. They are very, very, very uh, available. Like also in COVID, which was weird, like we, they were like, oh, try to come. We will figure it out uh, if you want to come to the department. They're very nice. Then. And yes, they get to know you, uh, some more than others. But generally, yes, if you come to class, they know who you are. Yeah, so um what about like the resources that the professors provide like do they give you slides does tor vergata give you books or access to like what, what are the resources like um for you guys we usually ask for slides there are few professors that don't give slides there are very few professors that don't give slides for the books uh we Usually, if we find about the PDF version, we very well share it with also other years. Uh, um, also, there is a library. And in this library, we have all the English books that we need. And for us of the English course, uh, usually we have uh, like one month to keep the book, which is good, while the Italian people have only few days a day just because they are multiple people so they needed the books and they needed to change people for us it's easier because like if you have five books uh, it's easier to share them between 30 people or 200. yeah that makes a lot of sense um well, and, for me. oh sorry go on no it's fine same i'm done <laughs> Uh, yeah, no, because I was just going to say, so like I actually did see your library as well and I saw the English books that like people can check out. It was it, it was also um, a super nice library, like there's plugs yeah. and there's lights and well, what are the uh, other teaching facilities like? Like do you guys have anatomy labs, histology labs? What are the facilities like? Like we libraries, everything? We do have an anatomy lab. We don't do dissection on cad cadavers. Just because I think, uh, I don't know, I thought in Italy it was illegal, but I'm not 100% sure because I know that some places do it. I don't know if it's just a corridor voice or it's an actual fact, but I've never heard of people that do dissections. We can go to the um, anatomic pathology department in the hospital and you can call and say, okay, there is an autopsy and you go there and assist to the autopsy, but you don't touch the body. Like you don't do anything, you just watch, which still is good. Um, we do have an anatomy lab with all the models uh, and um, we do have an histology labs. Personally, I don't use those labs and, um, that much. So there is an anatomy lab and I know that there is a, a microbiology lab. And I know that the professor are very available if you go there. Uh, but I don't know how much people use them actually. 
So, okay, but there are uh, those facilities available for people yeah. who do want to like, okay, very cool. And so like teaching facilities aside, what are the other university facilities like? Like I kind of briefly saw the Mensa from the outside. Um, do you have like a lot of sporting facilities, canteen facilities? Like what, what are the general facilities of the university like? non-teaching ones so um in the university building we have one bar uh that is basically like we usually buy lunch there uh in the hospital there are three bars and one mensa which is the cafeteria uh and also there is a university cafeteria, hospital cafeteria where you can go and then there is also a university cafeteria which is shared also with other faculties and it's uh, a bit farther away from the medical department it's just a couple of like uh, maybe a five minutes walk something like that and uh, i never ate there i think i never eat there i think uh, the the food is not bad they told me that it, the food is not bad so it's good um and also we have a course which is basically a sport uh, club and they have different type of supports for that I'm not very I don't know much because I'd never I've never been part of it but I know that there is and I think there are many sports there is basketball uh, there is golf I think uh, soccer there are many sports uh, I saw there is also like a gym yoga thing so they're very and I think they are for free for people that are pay, uh, are part of the university maybe you have to pay for the insurance but that's it uh yeah other stuff we have i don't know i think that's it okay, okay. um and so if you were to like okay this this is always a really hard question to ask but like what type of student do you think tor vergata is perfect for like if you had to describe like like for example, when I say Sapienza, I always say that like you kind of really need to be drawn to chaos and uh, metropolitan cities because Rome city center is like very, very chaotic and busy and, you know, buses set on fire and you kind of need to thrive in that. Uh, Sapienza students need to be like kind of vibing with that. Who would you say that Tor Vergata is perfectly suited for? Like what type of student do you think is it perfect for? Um, I don't know, because I think we are very, there are different people. I think uh, uh, being a, more, a less known university, uh, people that are not that competitive in a, I would say in a, there is a lot of competition, a lot of like, I want to be better than that person. I don't feel this vibe in Tervergata at all. I don't feel that vibe, especially in the core English course. I'm talking about the English course. Uh, you disappeared. Okay, uh, we are not that competitive. So I think uh, if you are a competitive person who looks for your fame and blah, 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 no. Uh, we are very outside of the city, so it's pretty chill. Uh, of course, if you wanna have a social life, crazy, going to the center, it's a bit uncomfortable. If you are chill and you you are study focused, I think it's a, it's a good uh but generally people are your people that you can meet so uh, anyone actually i wouldn't say there is a type of person you know yeah yeah i definitely uh it, it felt like i wasn't in rome when i went to the campus because of how like open it is like the air is cleaner out in tor Vergata. like it was yeah i would definitely say it's a lot more chill vibes um and that was super nice and so like if you wouldn't mind me asking like how did you prepare for the imat like how do you recommend students who uh prepare themselves for the imat like how did you study did you use resources what would you recommend i think you get to for example for me i was used to oral exams i'm not good at cross uh, multiple toys and stuff like that uh so i think for foreign is easier because they are used to that method like i feel like most foreign students at high school are used to the multiple choice uh, which uh, which it's a, an advantage for them um basic chemistry and biology i think uh, you should know because those are the most asked questions they are the blocks that are heavier i don't know if they changed the imet uh, since i did it i'm not 100 percent sure because they changed the italian type of exam 
So I don't know, question wise, what are the most prevalent one, but I remember chemistry and biology are for sure the most asked and are the trickiest one because then the understanding of the text, so the logic part, uh, for an English speaking person, it's pretty straightforward. It's like reading a book and you have to understand it. So you don't have to prepare for that. Just get used to the question. I would say do test a lot of tests because you need to get used to the type of question, to what are they asking you. Sometimes it's very hard to understand what they are asking you or what the most probable answer is because sometimes you have to answer with the most probable answer more than the correct one. I don't know if it makes sense. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, so I think that's the hardest part. I think then the physics and the and the, um, the physics and the math part, I think the math part is very basic. I don't know if it's because my math was pretty okay. Uh, and also the physics, I don't think it's very hard. I think thermodynamics and, and that part uh, is the most asked with electronic and electric things. Uh, but yes, to study and over path I think if you if you do those things it's very yeah and the the kind of the final question I want to ask is what what are the different type of activities for students like do you hang out with your classmates a lot or are there events by the university like when you're in city center there's a lot of student activities but you guys are like a little bit further outside so what type of student activities are there um for Tor Vergata students mm, so in campus, it's easier because we have a lot of people and you have the campus life, the different faculties and different people. Uh, Torre Vergata itself is really up on very much, it's personal. I think like if you have a group of friends, of course, there is not much to do. The closest thing is, uh, I think, Chamarra, which is a, a street close to Anandina, which is the mass metro station. And there are bars uh, and uh, it's a university kind of vibe, but in Torre Vergata, again, there is not much of to do. So if you're someone that wants to go out every night, this is not the environment. Like there is nowhere to go. Uh, but university, it tries to, as students, we try to make parties. So before COVID, we had uh, like a um, summer party. Uh, a spring party and a winter party for each faculty. So, for example, it was like the medicine party, uh, the economy party, and everybody was invited. There was a ticket, like five euros or something like that. So we tried to make something happen, but um, now it's impossible, of course. Uh, so just to hang out, there is few people, places to go. I think that's the hardest Thing for patients for people that want to live in Tor Vergata, there is nothing but the university. Yeah, 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 I can see how it's it can be a downside or an upside depending on like I think if 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 you're a person that just wants to like chill and focus on your studies, then maybe Tor Vergata is a, a better option. Um, yeah, I think that's th I think this is the fastest interview I've ever conducted, but this was. I'm just going to quickly check the, the list, but I think that was, mm -hmm. oh, sorry, one last one. Um, <clears throat> is it mandatory, like, is it mandatory to learn Italian by a certain year? Like, are clinical years locked behind uh, an Italian assessment? And does the university provide Italian classes for the students? Uh, for sure, the university provides Italian classes for the students. There was a rule which is very flexible, I would say, um, that just says that you have to have the B2 level of Italian or B1, B2, uh, before third year, enrolling in third year, or before enrolling in fourth year, by, by the third year anyway, uh, which is, again, flexible. I don't know anyone who failed the year because they didn't know Italian. However, me personally, I would suggest to, to learn Italian as soon as possible. First of all, because as Italian, we have the problem of not speaking English. So this is a problem also in the hospital. Even if we were very good at English, all the Italians, you cannot speak in English with the patient. So you lose a lot without knowing Italian. And uh, sometimes uh, the professor are nice, but of course the doctor can speak in English, but after the visit, they cannot speak in English during the visit. So you kind of like, it's, it's different, like knowing in during the visit and during the the patient talking and you uh 
being involved with the visit itself or knowing it afterwards. It's just a different vibe and I think it, you grow more if you are in within the conversation. Uh, and also it's hard for us Italian students to translate all the time, even if we do it. Uh, but I think like for just for the, the person, I think it's better to learn Italian. So yeah, by the third year, I think it's good. Yeah, I, I, I do agree that. Also, I do think that like if a student is coming to Italy, they really should learn Italian as uh, soon as possible. Just yeah, it, it makes sense. But yeah, some universities seem to provide classes or have a hard set rule and some don't. So I just wanted to quickly clarify that. Um, yeah, I think I'm going to stop the recording. Thank you uh, again for doing this. This was You're so welcome. helpful.